Nabokov, and this week we are back in the kitchen at Tres Mare in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef, Robert Padilla. Robert, thank you for inviting us back into your kitchen. Well, thank you for uh, coming back, Bonnie. Okay, so let's do a little review. Your journey to Tres Mare. I'm born and raised from North Kansas City. Okay. Um, we, uh, I started my journey. I was uh, a culinary student at Northland Career Center. Uh, and so did you always know that you wanted to cook? No, no, I really didn't. My, I, I was lucky in my childhood that my mother's uh, uh, from scratch cook. My grandparents mm -hmm. all cook. My grandfather's a wonderful cook. Um, but I never had too much interest in it until I, I kind of fell into it. And I, and I went to the, the Northland Career Center and this, the, from day one, it was that, wow. that was when I knew. So as soon as you began this training, you knew. I, I really took to it. It was. But it, your family was inspiring. You just hadn't made that connection Without yet. knowing it, yeah. it allowed me to become comfortable in a kitchen. Okay. From there, I, I, I was pushed to go work at Lydia's. Uh, where I started out that's as a, a line cook. That's a wonderful place it's to go. It's a great start, yep. and uh, it's some place where I uh, I think about still daily, uh, what would they do at Lydia's, and and we work that way here because it's a very professional kitchen, and and Lydia Bastianich is obviously the godmother of She's Italian, godmother. Italian cuisine. Yep, yep she is. And um, so you so you began working there on the line, but you ended up in a very a leadership position in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I, as I as I was was graduating high school, I started to push them that I wanted to move. I wanted to move to Pittsburgh. They were opening up the restaurant. Uh -huh. What can I do? How can I get there? They gave me a set of steps. If you can do these things, we'll send you up that way. So I did, and they did. And uh, from, a lot of initiative. You were self starter. You were very clear about where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do, and they responded to that interest and obvious talent. They did, and we basically started Lydia's Pittsburgh uh, as a construction site. So uh, I, I got to see the development of a building go up. Um, we put in equipment. We laid floors. We hired. You did everything. Uh, I, the the experience could never be matched. So I just watched. You had great teachers. I watched and learned, and I said yes to anything and everything they did, and uh, it, it really paid the way for me to what it takes to be a chef. You know all the ins and outs of it. I mean, from putting together a kitchen, how many chefs get that experience? Mm -hmm. And I think the more you know about the kitchen and how it comes together and, and how we can work for you and you work in it, mm -hmm. the better. All right, so you came back home. Thank you for I, coming I, back I can, home. Kansas City called me back home, as it yep. tends to do from time to time. Yep. And uh, I, I from there, I, I started working at Zen for a short period of time, and I kind of just floated around the city okay. um, to gain my experiences, to yep. see different styles of kitchens. And also, I was, I was young. Um, and as I started to slow down and, and uh, become reestablished in Kansas City, I found myself at Grand Street Cafe. So many of our chefs have come through Grand it's, Street it's, Cafe. It's, it, it has been a great uh, uh, ground for, for development. You had great experience. Um, how'd you find your way to Tres Omari? Oh, I was uh, working at Blue Stem for a few years and uh, as, as, a, as a sous chef. Yep. Um, and, and the opportunity to come to uh, Tres Omari um, and, and be the sous chef here uh, became available. And, and after some consideration, I decided to take that. Uh, and it quickly led into an executive chef's role. All right, so you are providing leadership now in the kitchen. At one time, there were executive chefs providing that leadership for you. What do you want to impart to your chefs? Uh, I think a, a respect and an understanding of what it takes to be in a kitchen. Uh, I often talk about a kitchen as a machine, as a moving, it, it's multiple moving parts. Um, you know, without your dishwasher, you're in big trouble. Yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> without your busser, you're in big trouble. So without your executive chef, Sure, you're in big yeah. trouble, but honestly, at the in the middle of a night, I'd rather have a dishwasher than an executive chef present, because that <laughs> coming piece of from the an executive machine chef is, yep. is so important to the entire idea of what you're doing, uh, and to provide great service and great uh, food for people on a nightly basis, all parts must run. So um, uh, it sounds to me like you're doing a wonderful job of sharing with your cooks and your staff about their value in the kitchen and how they contribute to every meal that's served here. Absolutely. We, we work with respect. This restaurant has really led some pioneering efforts on the green scene and so many of our chefs the last time we were here 
we went shopping at the farmer's market right in the mm -hmm. parking lot and um, you have several efforts going on to be green and I think that's just a part of the value that you place on the quality of life and food for the people who come here. I, I remember you were you recycle your waste mm -hmm. to help provide compost for area yeah, growers. Absolutely. You're recycling no, glass we recycle, now. We recycle glass. You're also very giving to not only the environment, but to the people who live here. And let's talk about the charity work the restaurant's doing. Sure, we're, we are a community-driven uh, business. Uh, we are in the service industry. We are here to serve people, uh, to make people happy. And uh, we, we extend that to our community. Uh, not not just to our front door and our back door. What I think is special about Tres Omare is the environment here. Well, it's changed since we were here. It has sort of a fresh, crisp look. We have a, a, a fairly large dining room, um, but in this large dining room, we have intimate spaces. Uh, we have corner booths that we're sitting in now. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, lightened up our walls. We've, we've, we've lightened up our decor, uh, added uh, tablecloths to our tables. Um, put in new carpet and, and really kind of tried to update and freshen up the building. I think nice another view. unique feature here is the sense of ownership. And we know that when you own something, you're more likely to feel invested and talk about the new financial situation here at Trade Sure, All right. we've rethought uh, uh, our plan for, for how to become uh, a growing business and how to continue to grow is we, we've decided to uh, start an employee ownership program. Okay. And, uh, and, and much like a, a high V, there's a vestment period, um, but, but individuals uh, of the restaurant will be given a, a percentage of ownership. Um, and it can go from a dishwasher to a, uh, a server, from myself or yes. to a general manager. Um, and, and the point of this is, is to give a piece of something to somebody that already believes in what we're doing. And we are saying, you should do this with us. What are we going to make in the kitchen today, Chef? Well, we're going to do a, a variety of items. Okay. Um, and, it, and it's a little bit to showcase where we're going uh, for our summer menu. Yes. Um, and what we'll have is we'll start off with a Fiori pasta, which Fiori is uh, Italian for flour. Uh. And we, we do make all of our own pasta in-house. Um, everything we do, we have, a, we have an extruder that we make, that we make uh, with, with simply flour and eggs. Okay. And uh, it comes out like a beautiful flour. Um, and, and fresh pasta is the way to go. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It, it is, it no is a beautiful product. Yep. Um, and we will do our, our Fiori pasta with uh, Jamaica's Italian sausage, which is a local company of ours. It is. Fresh broccoli. And so we'll have our Fiori pasta, the Italian sausage, broccoli, and that will be tossed in a uh, Parmesan broth. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's the first dish. What's mm -hmm. the second? You're going to teach us how to cook. Steak. Yeah, we're we're going to we're going to we're going to play with some steaks tonight. Uh, we we one of the features of our restaurant is a wood fire grill. Um, so we have no gas hooked up to it. It's 100% oak that we burn. Uh, gives you a wonderful flavor, and flavor. It's, it, the flavors of, of, of our fish smoky. and our meats is, mm -hmm. is really wonderful, and it's really a compliment to that wood fire grill. But we will finish with uh, one of our new desserts that we've been working on. Uh, we actually just released our, our spring and summer dessert menu, and we will do a, uh, a lemon bar. Uh. So we'll do fresh lemon curd with uh, a, a little pie crust underneath, uh, and then that will be served with fresh raspberries and uh, fresh whipped cream. Okay, I think you and I need to get in the kitchen and start cooking. I think yes, it's time. I do. And I think you need to come with us. We are in the kitchen at Tres Omare with their executive chef, Robert Padilla. We are getting ready to make the first of his signature dishes. It's a pasta dish. Chef, where do we begin? Okay. Well, we start off uh, in our kitchen. We love a hot pan. A okay, hot we pan need to remember to do that in our kitchen. Always a, a, in our kitchen, we always start off with a hot pan. Okay. The process starts a little quicker. You get a nicer sear on items when you're looking for it. Okay. Um, so we've got we our put pan. Put your hand over it. Then mm -hmm. warm at nice about enough. five inches, Absolutely. and we're ready to go. Okay. And so now I'll run you through our little ingredient list. Okay. So again, we're making our fiori with uh, the Italian sausage and broccoli. Yum. So here we have some pre-cooked Jamaica's Italian sausage, fresh broccoli here. Yum. Uh, and what we've done, it's, it's raw, and we've just kind of picked our florets. 
And now we have little individual florets. Ready to go. Uh, garlic. So this is just peeled garlic that we've sliced thin. Yes. Okay, so you can take any garlic from home. You could use crushed garlic, prepared crushed garlic, really anything you feel comfortable with using. Okay. Uh, this is just red chili flake, like you get with your pizza. Right. Um, it, it's only to add a touch of heat. And we will use a very small amount of this. This is far too much to, that we would use for an entire day. But you do it to taste. Yes. And, and they, these vary in their strength. Uh, yum. Mm -hmm. I think it adds a whole depth. It, it definitely it adds a little depth. What else do we have for our mise en place? Um, here we have our Fiori noodles. So and we're going to remind our, our listeners, our audience, that this is homemade. I know you make all your pasta fresh here. But if you wanted to buy a dry pasta, you could. Absolutely, and okay. they sell a Fiori in, in, in the grocery store. Look how pretty these and, are. And, uh, you know, your favorite pasta oh will my. work, absolutely. Oh. You know, there, I'm sorry, there's just no substitute for fresh. That is true. Oh. So here on the line of our production kitchen, we always have butter kept out at room temperature. It's unsalted, I assume. That is correct, we use all unsalted butter. So you can season. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And uh, in, in it goes in the pan. And so you can see the pan's hot, so the butter starts to cook. Uh, in goes the sausage. Now, you, again, you've already pre-cooked the sausage. Yeah, and I think that that's probably a pretty good thing to do, even if you're going to make this at home, because uh, with the butter, if you're trying to cook your sausage raw, uh, you'll start to get some of that brown butter, okay. which isn't a bad thing, but then you, you run the lines of, uh, of, of burning the butter. We're not going to burn the butter, no. Okay, so in goes uh, our Italian sausage. You know, we'll really, once in. you've prepared all the ingredients, the dish itself is not that time. Uh, no, no, soon. no, it's very, very quick. So in goes uh, the broccoli, oh, the sausage, so and we let this kind of brown up while this is cooking at the time. Now oh, look how the broccoli is starting to get that vivid green. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's raw, but you're seeing that it's already starting to cook and break down, and that's when that nice bright green starts to pop out. And the flavor. And the flavor. And absolutely. the flavor. And that's why you okay. let this saute a little bit. Uh, I'm going to throw our uh, pasta noodle into our boiling water. Okay. Now we'll add a little bit of garlic. Uh, we, we wait to add this uh, about now as you start to see some of the sausage brown. Some of the broccoli is starting to cook and turn nice and green. We add the, bro or the garlic now uh, so that we don't let it burn. Uh, All right, and, and so the, the order in which you do it, the timing really does, it does matter. It does matter, and again, I think if, if you if you have all of your mise en place pulled together ahead of time, you won't feel so rushed. You won't. Uh, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable. Really, mise en place just keeps the anxiety level down. It really the does. Uh, absolutely, up. absolutely. Yep. And, and it allows you to have fun with cooking, uh, and I think that that should always be the focus in, in doing this. Enjoy yourself, experiment, play, and and should almost always end up with something that you enjoy. And if you're doing this at the last minute, your guests have the opportunity to watch this. I think it adds to the whole dining experience. Absolutely. So now we'll add in a touch of chili flake. A little goes a long I'm way. I'm noticing something. You're putting the chili flakes right on the pan. Sure. Tell me why you're doing what, that. What we're really looking to do is kind of pull out the oil of the chili. Yes. Um, that will help to disperse its, its flavor and its heat throughout the entire dish. Um, and we're not looking to burn it. Uh, a burned chili is much like burned garlic. It's going to start getting bitter, and, and the aroma and the, the flavor will be a little bit offensive to you. And so now we'll give that a little bit of a toss as it started to uh, exceed its oils, as the heat is starting to let those release. Um, and you can see our garlic is starting to brown. Everything's getting done at the right time when you put it in that order. And again, it's already prepped. You're ready to go. Now we're going to add a little bit of our chicken stock. So again, what we use in the restaurant, uh, uh, we make uh, of course. start to finish. Um, but, but what you can buy in, in the grocery stores nowadays is, is a pretty good product. They do have genuine chicken stocks that you can purchase now. Um, they, they do, and some of it's organic, mm -hmm. and it, you can and, get and a good quality. And all of those are a, a good substitute. Um, now, I would go with using chicken stock as opposed to uh, a bouillon or a broth because you want the, the natural proteins that are in the chicken stock. That will help to uh, adhere your sauce and make it a nice, uh, tight A distinction sauce. we need to pay attention to. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Just a reminder, we're using chicken stock, not chicken broth. That's correct. And we don't use bouillon because that has a whole lot of other things yeah, in there it's, that it's, we it's just really, don't want to do. It's really not do. good for you and, no, and the sodium chemicals. levels of it and the chemicals in it is, is something that you really don't want to uh, pass on to your friends. So are you wanting some of this stock to reduce a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. So now we're adding yeah. salt and pepper. And that's kosher salt, I assume? It is kosher salt, and what we do, since we are on our line and, we're, and we are in, in production service, we do a salt and pepper mix. 
So we grind our fresh black peppercorns. Uh, so that's what went in there was that mix. <laughs> Taste your food. Taste your food. Taste your food. Uh, you know, you're going to serve it to somebody. You're going to eat it yourself. You don't want to spend all the time and effort to have something. Oh, no, I brought this. Then you this, have a surprise when or, it gets far to... too salty or yeah, something like yeah. that. He's delicious. Now we have our okay. fresh noodle. And as you can see, it's grown oh, in size a little bit. Yes. Uh, we we like the al dente style pasta, but again, this is your dish and you're making it. So to the tube, which is al dente, but remember that when it goes into the hot chicken stock here, it's going to still be doing some cooking. Absolutely. So uh, and, and be that, mindful. And that is your your carryover cooking it's together. Gorgeous. You can Just. see the nice broth in there. Um, we've already added our butter. Um, so what I am going to do is take it back on and let it come back up to the simmer. And the natural starches that are in the pasta, the butter that was initially in the pan, and now the chicken stock are all going to combine together to, to make, make us sauce. one complete sauce. On to the second dish for your signature work. What do we have here? Okay, here we have uh, the petite tender. Yes. Uh, also known as the Terrace Major, which is its proper name. And uh, what this is is a cut of beef, uh, and it comes off of the shoulder blade. Okay, and it's a, it's a very seldom used muscle in, in the calf or cow, um, and, and that is what keeps it nice and tender. It keeps it nice and tender, and, and I also want to thank you. This is a vintage meat, meaning mm -hmm. this cow has not been genetically modified over the years. Yeah, and you all are very devoted to that. We are. We uh, Any beef that we sell in the restaurant is vintage beef, uh, and that's the product line that we go with. Um, and, and that is because it's 100% Holstein cattle. Um, which is uh, a little bit of an old world style. Um, mm -hmm. pe people are very happy with uh, black Angus these days, mm -hmm. but we find that Holstein is a little bit leaner and that the flavor is a little bit truer to what you should expect when you taste beef. And these have not been fed antibiotics, steroids, growth hormones, and has been fed grass. That's, that's correct. Yeah. This, this is a true all natural product and uh, we are one of 50 restaurants in the United States to serve this exclusively. Thank so. you very much. Mm -hmm. Now. Before, we're gonna take this to your wood-burning grill, mm -hmm. but before we do that, just some basic how-tos. How do you select a good piece of meat? What kind of marbling color are you looking for? Um, I think the, the first thing you should do is, is find a butcher. Um, and find a butcher that, that will talk to you and explain different cuts of meat to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and gain a trust and a relationship with that person. Before we put this on the grill, do you want it to come up to room temperature, or do you take it? Yeah, right? I think I think you're pretty good to go. Come out of your refrigerator. Um, go for it. You know, set it down. Uh, you can marinate, uh, or what we do in the restaurant is salt and pepper. Because if you got great meat and you got wood burning grill, you probably have most and, and of what you yeah, need. Yeah, absolutely, and you want that to stand on its own. Okay, so how are we going to season these guys? Uh, again, uh, like what we did with the uh, uh, the pasta dish, yes. is we'll just use a little salt and pepper mix. Okay, and again, this is kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper. Yes, it is. And again, you can be fairly liberal Pretty with it generous, on your meat. because part of it's going to fall off on the grill. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and with the beef, you know, you're seasoning to the inside also, but you have to stay on the outside. Um, so I believe the beef can get a little bit more liberal of okay. seasoning. Okay, don't be bashful. That's right. We're seasoned. We're at a very hot grill. What do we do? Okay, it's time to throw the meat on. Okay. So we're seasoned up here on one side. Yes. So we'll go ahead and put that side down. Okay. Okay, so that side goes down. You see your salt and pepper. I do. And down it goes. Uh, now we'll do a little more salt and pepper right over the top. And you're going to let that meat cook to the desired temperature. What would a meal be without dessert? You know, frequently we, I mean, we always remember the dessert. Absolutely. And this is a classic. Tell us uh, what we have here. All right, so you've already pre-baked the the crust. Tell us what this, is it more like a shortbread type? Uh, yeah, it really is. It's a, it's a very basic uh, uh, shortbread crust. So as you can see, this is our lemon bars filling. Um, and we'll open it up here and you can see the finished product. Oh, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And we kept it a little bit loose. Uh, so, so when we double boil it, we, we're not bringing it up all the way to a complete thickness. Uh, we're really just trying to combine our ingredients so that they adhere to each other. Um, we pour this into our pan uh, and it bakes in the oven for about an hour and a half at 325. An hour and a half at 325. And I think we're ready to go and start planning all of these creations. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely.
Okay, Chef, we're now starting to plate your creations. The first one's the pasta. What do you suggest? Well, it's time to uh, uh, pretty much serve it right up in your bowl. Okay. What we like to do is at the very end, now you're off the heat yes. and you're ready to serve. Yes. Now is when we'll throw in our herbs. Okay. And so we have fresh herbs. What we have today is just chive, yes. uh, oregano, rosemary, and thyme. Oh, how okay. lovely. So that's going to go right in. So you're not really looking to put fire onto those herbs. You're just okay. trying to heat them. And again, you're going to release. So it has that fresh yes, layer. Yes, absolutely. And it gives oh, the natural yeah. aromatics uh, start to uh, uh, be released. And what you get is when it's presented at a table is a nice, clean, fresh smelling dish. I'll tell you, this is beautiful in that you used white you canvas for your artwork. And these bowls are so fun and so inviting. And I noticed you did something else, which is a great, you know, a great treat to your dinner guests. You're serving these in warm, warm plates. Yes, we do. On this dish. The dish is here, and to finish, we will add a little Parmesan cheese. Now this you've done just with a vegetable Yeah, peeler, yeah, absolutely. Mandolin. Ready to plate the petite tender. It's been on the grill, and I know you let it rest mm -hmm. before you touch a knife to it. That's right. Now, how are we going to slice this? Okay, well, uh, one of the nice things about the petite tender is you mm -hmm. can see its grain very easily. Yes. And you always want to cut against that grain. Please remember uh, to do that. Yeah, which, which all that means to cut against the grain is just to cut the opposite of what you see the lines. So okay. if the lines are so moving we this way, we do we're going to turn are. it, and we're going to cut it the opposite way. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. So I'll start with the bigger piece here, and again, it's it's rested for about uh, five minutes. Oh, and uh, what what we tried to cook was a nice medium. Okay, and so we'll uh, we'll see Please where we're at. That yeah, way. and yeah. so we'll pop one open, and I'm gonna say that's a pretty nice medium steak right there. Lovely. And again, when you let the meat rest, what it does is it's gonna lock in most of its juices. Uh, so these are Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. Oh, you can tell they are. Uh huh. And what we do is we leave the skins on them uh, because with the Yukons, it's a very thin skin, and I think it adds a nice texture to, to and the And flavor. And we're told that all the nutrition, right. or much of the nutrition's right, right there. So let's do that. Flavor and nutrition. So again, you can just drop your potatoes down. Uh, the plate we we chose to use today is is. Uh, uh, just one of our waved plates. And what um, else are we going to do? Uh, we also grilled some wood fire, uh, some asparagus here. And so again, if you're out barbecuing, um, you know, when, when we have backyard barbecues, if we're cooking meat, we're going to also grill our vegetables. There you go. Um, and then that way you can hang out outside. Keeps the house cool. Keeps the too. house cool, and uh, and uh, it really goes with uh, everything that you're cooking. Pretty. Um, so we'll just kind of stack them up. Here's uh, just four little spheres of grilled asparagus. Okay. Now we can take it right over to the plate. We'll lay it down. We can show our pieces here. Again, that's the end piece, so We're it's always going to, right. yeah, it's always going to be a little bit more done there. But as you can see, the nice mediums uh, throughout. And uh, for us at the restaurant, we serve uh, a, a Bordelaise sauce, which is okay. a, a veal stock that's been reduced down uh, with lots of red wine, and then, and then we finish it with butter. You have a nice completed dish here. Beautiful, chef. Thank you. We're going to go play dessert. And then we're going to be ready. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we, we chose just a, a white rectangle plate, uh, which is what we plate this dessert on uh, in the restaurant. Um, lay your lemon bars any way you want. Okay. okay? I mean, you know, it, can, it really uh, it can go any way. Um, have, have fun. fun. Uh, have fun. Always, always. Okay. Um, what else are we serving with our lemon bars? Uh, we have some fresh raspberries here. It's Gorgeous. springtime, and, 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 the, and the berries are starting to pop. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to focus on that. I also have a little sugar. Um, and this we, we forget to do that with our berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, just a little bit of sugar. Yeah. And it really helps juice them. It, and, that, and that's what it's for. It's not to sweeten the raspberries at all. They're plenty sweet on their own. It's to help draw out some of their natural juices and kind of break them down, mm -hmm. kind of layer them any way you want. You know, this screams springtime. Do you have a final touch here? Yeah, Because I see absolutely. a final touch uh, here. With, with fresh berries, I, I think that uh, no fresh berries truly complete without a little fresh whipped cream. I would agree with you. And again, as much or as little as you would like, we'll put some right over the, oh, the lemon bar and maybe a dollop right there. Yeah, I think so. And again, that that's, that's going to complete your dessert. Okay. Chef, thank you so much for inviting us back into your kitchen. I think what we need to do from here is go to the bar, Pair all of these dishes with a beverage of your choice. Absolutely. And then present that to our celebrity taster. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and we have just been in the kitchen at Tres Omare with their executive chef, Robert Padilla, making his signature dishes for the season. It is a homemade pasta with sausage and broccoli. He then did a 
petite steak and then finished off his dishes with lemon bars. What to drink with these magnificent creations? Chef, what do you suggest? Maybe we begin with the pasta. Sure. Uh, with the pasta, what we'll start off with, uh, I chose a uh, Benzinger Chardonnay. It's uh, 2009. Um, I chose this dish for uh, its, its butteriness, uh, it's, it's very smooth, it's served chilled, uh, and it will cut through the spiciness of the Italian sausage um, and help lend itself to the butter that's in the broth that actually makes up the sauce of the pasta. Okay, so Chardonnay for the pasta. Now what about our little steak? So what we have here is our uh, Villa Puccini Chianti, uh, and, and this is a nice, bold, heavy red wine. Uh, that should match very well to the uh, the richness of the steak, uh, as well as the sauce that goes with it is also made with uh, a lot of red wine. So this will win really nice, very nice earthy tones uh, and a very nice warm blend of wine. Okay, so kind of classic with the meat. Now we're going to finish with those exquisite lemon bars. And what should we serve with our lemon bars? Uh, with, with most desserts, we, we like nice, crisp, clean uh, flavors to go with uh, the uh, wine pairings. And so what I've chose is a, uh, a rosé, and with this will be a very crisp, clean flavor uh, with a hint of raspberry, and the dish will actually be garnished with some macerated raspberries. Okay, so we've got everything matched and paired, and now all we have to do is serve it to our celebrity taster, who is a familiar face here in Kansas City, Chris Fernandez and a familiar face to you because he's your cousin. He actually is my cousin, okay. so it'll be a very nice joy. All right, so let's go prepare for our taster. Let's okay. go, Bonnie. We have just been in the kitchen at Tres Omari with their executive chef, Robert Padilla, preparing fabulous signature dishes. We've gone to the bar to pair them and now to taste these creations we have from 41 Action News or is it Action 41? It's 41 Action News. 41 Action yeah, News. You got it right. Chris Hernandez. Chris, thank you. You're no stranger to the TV screen. Well, no, but I am yeah. very excited about this because I don't usually get to eat a fabulous meal while I'm doing some on-camera stuff. And of course the other pieces that Robert happens to be your cousin. Robert is my cousin. Is I used to call him Robbie when he was a little kid. I know, but he's so mature and grown now that we call him Robert. He has certainly inherited the cooking gene from somewhere in our family. I'm not quite sure. It where. wasn't you, though? No. No. Oh, my mom's you, a good cook. But you love And that's food. his godmother, so. And that's his godmother. This is the Benzinger Chardonnay. Okay. That's going to go with the pasta. Okay. This is the Bouvet Rosé. That will go with your dessert. It is going to go with our dessert. This is the Via Puccini Chianti, all right. Okay. And Chianti. that's going to go with the, the wonderful steak that he grilled. Okay. On his wood-burning grill. The on. signature dishes of the evening. We will have our house-made Fiori pasta with Jamaica's Italian sausage, broccoli, and a Parmesan broth. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And here we have our petite tenderloin. It is wood-fired, uh, served with Yukon gold mashed potatoes, wood-fired asparagus, and finished with sauce bordelaise. Wow. Absolutely. And then, of course, you will need a dessert. We will. And so for here, for dessert, we will have our lemon bars uh, with fresh macerated raspberries and uh, whipped cream. Nice. Enjoy. You know what I love about Robert is that he is always um, doing, working with local food product makers as as well as he's also doing um, working with the growers. I mean, he's talking to the farmers. Sure. He know what's in. He knows what is in season. He knows what is being delivered. I have to tell you one other thing about this pasta. Please Robert do. made it. Okay. It's oh, fresh. handmade the pasta. No, it's handmade the pasta. Excellent. And what do you call this particular shape? It's called Fiori. Okay. And the uh, sausage is from Schmeckes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. You know what I Here's like? There's a reason about. Have you noticed this pasta sort of melting in your mouth? Mm -hmm. The only way that can happen is if it's fresh made. Right. Okay. You know what I like here mm -hmm. is Garlic. that. You think of a sausage dish as sometimes being a little bit heavy, mm -hmm. but you've got this delightful combination of the lightness of the pasta and the sauce along with the, the sausage. I'm going to tell you another reason why it's not heavy. He used chicken stock okay. instead of heavy cream. Oh, excellent. Okay, so there's a little bit of butter because what would life be without butter? Right. But the, the major part of the sauce was created out of chicken stock. I okay. need another bite. Yes, I do. And some fresh broccoli to make it healthy, right? Actually, it is healthy. It's really good. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what are do you, you gonna, like about this? Are you going to keep your cousin? I will keep are my cousin keep in the family. Cousin? We're not kicking him out of the okay, family at all. all right. No, if anyone cooks it in my family like mm. this, I keep them too. What do I like about yeah. this? The combination of the freshness of the broccoli, the depth of flavor that you get from the sausage, right. and the sauce with the house-made pot. I mean, this it just doesn't get better than this. And are these little uh, red pepper flakes or oh, something? You, now listen for a political reporter. I'm impressed. <laughs> he did. He did put a little bit of red pepper flakes in here, and I learned something. I'm always learning from my chefs. Normally, you see seasoning going on top of whatever the product is mm -hmm. in the saute pan. He put the red pepper flakes directly onto the heat of the of the pan, so that oh. they're not only their flavor, the aroma, everything. And he didn't have to use that much, but you got just a little bit of mm -hmm. heat, didn't you? Yeah, there's a, just a little afterburn, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And even that tasted very fresh. I like that. So wow. we learned about technique. We learned about process. Um, and really the timing of mm -hmm. introducing each ingredient makes a huge difference in the outcome of the dish. This Tell goes me with pasta. how that works with this dish. You he know, wanted oaky with it. Yeah. I, and the, the bite in the Chardonnay stands up to the sausage, yes, but yet the lightness of a would, white yes. goes with the, the light sauce. Okay. So we is that give, what I was supposed we to give say? Them a good, is you, that what a foodie would say? You did good. I'm okay. not a foodie, I'm a food eater. Food e no, no, no. People need to understand the term foodie. It doesn't mean that you're a cook, it just means you love food. Mm. Okay, now tell me about this again, because it went right. by so fast. It's I, a beautiful I know, and it's trying here. to absorb it all. So this is um, a petite tender, and it's a very delicate, primarily not often used piece of the beef, and of course this beef is uh, a heritage product. It hasn't been fed growth mm -hmm. hormones, steroids, mm -hmm. or antibiotics. It's been grass fed. And he put, he seasoned it lightly with salt and pepper and put it on the wood burning grill. Okay. And this was the result. We get to have Let's... the first bite and mm -hmm. some asparagus and some okay. Yukon gold mashed potatoes. That's the other thing. Robert is so green. Mm. You know, they recycle, I think, almost 85%. What do you think of this? That is so tender. Mm -hmm. And the sauce is, um, I'm not familiar with it's that sauce very much. They reduced some veal stock and then they've added some wine and butter. Now how yeah. could that be bad? Yeah, I mean it's, it's, uh, it's velvety almost. Velvety. Smooth, yeah, very smooth. Yeah, butter. Mm -hmm. Very smooth. And you don't need a lot of butter to get that texture. Okay, you're mm. tasting the potatoes now. So potatoes are good. Potatoes are very good. Yukon Gold, you said? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He leaves the skin on. Of course, everything's organic, but actually most of the nutrients mm -hmm. are just right under the skin. So while you're eating your potato, you can honestly say you yeah. are getting vitamins and minerals. Well, and it's, again, it's not too heavy. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. like mashed potatoes because they're heavy. Um, these are not heavy. They're, they've got a lightness. They have such, Yukon Golds have such wonderful flavor that you don't need to add a lot of, but it looks like it's loaded with butter. It has some butter in it, but you don't need that much because the Yukon Gold Potato itself has mm. that richness on it. This you. is really good. Isn't that yummy? Yeah. All right. Now, the Chianti is what he suggested with okay. red meat, which is classic. It's traditional. Right. You need to We taste. are at an Italian restaurant. We're doing that. Mmm, mm. that's really good. Yeah, that's delicious. You want some of that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have some of that. We're sharing. We are sharing. It's mm -hmm. the best part about food, right? Oh, that is good. Mm -hmm. Wow. The asparagus is it has that wonderful smoky flavor. The mm -hmm. potatoes are perfect. Actually, they're perfect. This, so this cut of meat, I mean, it is just, yeah. it just goes down. Mm -hmm. It goes good. down. Wow. This is, of course, house-made with cream and raspberries that have had just the slightest amount of sugar put on mm, them. To I can juice see them. the little sugar I know, crystals right there. You don't need a lot. Okay. All right. So here we go. Okay. We each well, we've each got an end. Mm -hmm. We can dive in. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Okay. Going to spear some whipped cream. I know you did. Okay. Here. This is Chef's celebration of spring. You think mm -hmm. you did it? Yeah, I think you did it. 
This is lemony licious. Mm -hmm. Lemony licious. <laughs> lemony licious. You just made that up. I, I did. I know. What is it about raspberries that goes so well with this sort of thing? Well, it's the tart and the sweet. Mm -hmm. So it sort of extends the flavor of the lemon. Wow. Mm -hmm. and you know, this cream? is wrecking my diet. You know. <laughs> when you come to a place like this. <laughs> You don't do diet. No. no, diet's for home, not for here. The trolley run is coming up, and I um, work with that every year. Well, let's talk a little bit about your career, because it's an impressive one. You've been doing oh, that's sweet of you. political reporting for over 20... You know how to do this now. You've been doing it for well, over 20 years. I've been a reporter for a long time. Okay. <laughs> And I am a political reporter at 41 Action News. And I sometimes see you on KCPT right, with Nick Haynes. with Nick Haynes. Haynes. We do mm -hmm. Week in Review, and that's kind of a lot of fun. We, we sit around and hash things out. Um, been in a lot of different cities, but I came home to work in Kansas City see, again. It's my hometown. Home, home matters. I know you've been in Chicago and yeah. Cleveland, a few other, you know. Chicago great. has great food, but I have to tell you, I have been telling my friends to come here to visit. Can't believe because it. Because there's so much good food here. There's so much good food here, and, and the show celebrates that. People would not believe the amount of talent that we yeah. have. We're it's so amazing. fortunate, and yeah. our broadcast journalists, too, but um, so what what about your career? Obviously, now you're giving well, time to charities. One, one reason why you. I'm glad I came home is I have gotten really involved with the Children's Center for Visually Impaired, also very involved with Youth Friends. Um, there are a lot valuable of great organizations. Organiz both yeah. very valuable organizations. And I, I've helped out in the past with the, the Maddie Road Center and the Guadalupe Center, and there's a, there's a lot of great organizations that are doing really good work in the community. We have great heart in Kansas City, too. I know you have a very busy schedule. I want to thank you for taking time out to be our celebrity taster. Who can taster? turn down great food and well, Tesamare with my cousin? Your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Executive Chef Robert Padilla, who cooks great for our family at some events, yeah. uh, family events. For you all. Well, thank you. Thank you for all you do for the city and for for great reporting. You know, it takes people like you to bring us information in a way that we can understand it. I appreciate you're balanced, that. you're in depth, and we appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and we're continuing our special feature on In the Cellar with Visits to the Vineyards. This week, we are going to visit the vineyards in Australia, and Chris Cribb and I are here with Wines by Jennifer. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Australia, and I understand it's Keith Bryan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Winemaker in Australia has been your stomping grape, so perhaps we should talk about that experience before we talk about his vineyards. Well, what did, you, did you do this? Did you I stomp? did. I, you you know, did. We, we came <laughs> up with an shoes. idea to try okay. to do something a little little fun a couple yeah. years ago up here. But let's talk about the vineyard. I mean, Keith's work there. Keith, mm -hmm. um, coming from his pilot career, decided to... And um, we should mention Jennifer's a pilot. This yes. is very impressive. I mean, you all bonded with the we pilot did. thing. We did. Instantly. Instant, <laughs> instant bonding. It's sort of like food and wine. People would, you do food yeah. and wine. Um, so what drew you to his vineyards? Well, his vineyards and his, I think it's vineyard selection is probably oh, even okay. a, a better way to put it. He was a French trained winemaker. Mm -hmm. um, he went and went and uh, studied for two years in uh, Burgundy and, and really learned, mm -hmm. learned how to make yeah. good wine. Yes, yes. Um, but he also learned how to uh, to find the right vineyards and to teach vineyard management to people. Mm -hmm. So his his own vineyards, uh, he was doing Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, sparkling wines. Okay. And uh, their water is precious. I mean, it is. They do flood irrigation in many areas and the farmers have to work together to know that the flood is the let loose the rivers and they all work together to know that it's going downhill okay. <laughs> so that they're ready for when their water gets to them to water their vineyards it's it's pretty it's so pretty sophisticated it's a whole nother, yes it's a whole nother mm -hmm. layer of management that perhaps other vineyards don't have to well deal it, with it's mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. they are in a, a long drought it's they're, drought. they're mm -hmm. in this yeah. this yeah. eight year drought and um it leads to you know a real stress mm -hmm, on the vines mm -hmm. um, but water management's a very big issue. The vineyards do look different in yes, Australia they than they do in other parts of the world mm -hmm. and so um, Keith has handpicked. He, yes Keith mm -hmm. handpicked and um, we brought a couple of the um, white wines that he does here. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are 
the two different Chardonnays. Okay. Um, Keith is uh, working out of Victoria, um, the province down at the bottom of the state. Uh, we do a Chardonnay and then a single vineyard, single vineyard Chardonnay from the Yarra Valley, which mm -hmm. is one specific region. Mm -hmm. uh, the Yarra Valley is known for being more of a cool climate area, so it, um, it's just a little higher in elevation coming out and um, a little more uh, breezes from the uh, from the ocean that come through. So it's it's not as ripe and rich. The the other one is a little has a little less oak to it as well. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thought we would uh, you know just okay, taste so a couple of these. Okay, here. let's um, do it. So we can s taste and smell that vineyard right here in the mm. wine. So Chardonnay in in Australia is usually bright and has tropical mm -hmm, fruits to very it. Very tropical. Yeah. What would you pair with this Chardonnay? I would pair this because of its tropical fruits with um, and its freshness. I would pair it with a salad that has maybe mandarin oranges and mm. some um, spiced pecans uh, with a light uh, vinaigrette. With yeah, the mandarin orange really kind of would mm -hmm. be a good pair with this. It um, would be wonderful. I mean, even something else light like if you were, I, I like sushi. Oh this yes, be a, perfect. Like, perfect. Sushi, yeah. nice, you know, something like that. To, to Absolutely. So, so yeah. and what about? This Chardonnay over here, it has a different flavor profile. What would you pair with it? Sure, the signature Chardonnay has got a little bit more luscious mouthfeel to mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, that uh, the addition of the the thyme and oak and mm -hmm. um, and the cooler climate. It I think more about like a cream sauce. Absolutely, dish. yeah. Um, you know. Maybe over fettuccine with some Ooh. seafood because this is so close to the um, ocean uh, along the coast it that fish. it does. It, it wants does. some kind of a prawn or some seafood okay. with it. Okay. And a cream sauce. So again, <laughs> so Keith is a winemaker right. and he so he handpicks the vineyards. Sure, and the vineyards that he works with um, vary in age from from this. Vineyard here, the single vineyard, it's about a 30 year old vineyard. Mm -hmm. Australia didn't go through prohibition, so you know, we're <laughs> just kept on just keeping kept, on. Kept, kept going. So, there's some pretty old vineyards in Australia, some of the oldest in the world. Um, but um, he's tried to, to find places that have a distinct, um, distinct personality, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of leads us into our um, third wine we've yes. got here. This is the Silver Wings. Vincenzo Muvedra Shiraz. Okay, so, and when we think of Australia, we do think of Shiraz. Right. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, What's special about this one? Well, this is uh, a an, a vineyard mm -hmm. that is uh, has about forty year old vines. Mm -hmm. All of them are um, mixed throughout the vineyard, so they don't necessarily when they pick, they don't necessarily mm -hmm. say this is all the Shiraz, this is all the Muvedra. They pick it, co-pick it all at the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when they do the um, do the crush and all of that piece, all of the wine is together. Mm -hmm. So it gives it this integration that I think you don't find in a lot of other wines. It gives it a little bit more earthiness, I think. Yeah, I How agree with that. How would you describe that. this flavor? In this. Well, it's rich and bold, but it has some of that old world kind of um, nuances of that earthiness to it that sometimes you don't always get with a 100% Shiraz. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a little more depth. A little more depth. I would, I would absolutely say. What would you pair it with, folks? Mm -hmm. mm, something on the Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got to do barbecue with that because it's serious food for serious wine. I, I mean, I do love. I mean, filet mignon, oh, you know, yeah. something like that. Big just, red meat. Just, Absolutely. Just nice. Um, maybe a, um, a pork chop, like a grilled pork chop mm -hmm. would be good pair as well. Uh, so it likes things from the grill, especially that, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, even even some um, some blue cheese, maybe, mm -hmm. would probably be another good, um, that saltiness in the blue cheese. After, you know, I, I'd say this is a great wine mm -hmm. to go have a nice steak mm -hmm. after dinner. Instead of getting the dessert, go ahead, yeah. finish and your bottle, and have a cheese course. Yep. It'd be perfect. To everyone's health. Well, thank yes. you very much for mm -hmm. allowing us to yes. come in the cellar at Wines by Jennifer. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.